Yeah, and I guess one of the things I want young people to know is that it takes a while to get to that level of comfort. Because I think sometimes people feel like, oh, I should be more uh, solid about this. I should be less anxious about this. And it is it's a process. It's a growth process. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and some people, you know, in, in terms of figuring out your own, I mean, the first step of being, the first step toward coming out is being able to look in the mirror and know with clarity mm -hmm. who and what you are. Right. My contention is that whoever and whatever you find yourself to be, it needs to be okay. Mm -hmm. That okayness, to me, has to mostly come from society. But it also has to come from ourselves, yes. because otherwise we're wrestling with mm -hmm. internalized homophobia. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, always treating, you know, when someone says, are you gay, are you lesbian, mm -hmm. answering like it's something to be ashamed of. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that to me says there's still internalized homophobia yep. that needs to be dealt with. I think there is. You know, instead of just saying, yes, mm -hmm. and? Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and this concerns you. <laughs> mm -hmm because, you know, maybe it doesn't. Maybe mm -hmm. they just wanted to know. Maybe maybe they're coming out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a cousin who just came out to them and they don't know how to deal with right. it. Right. And they're hoping you'll have some insight on how do you relate to mm -hmm. a gay person. Because yeah. I, I could never talk to my cousin directly about this, mm -hmm. but I want to be supportive, but I don't know how. Right. And, and they're to be commended for mm -hmm. even acknowledging that they don't know how. Right, yeah. Um, I recall reading a book once on a, a lighter note. Um, a man who came out to a co-worker who was a woman, and she smiled, said, okay. And the next day presented him with a present. And uh, it was uh, uh, a uh, women's lingerie. Mm. And of course he went ballistic and was like, how could you possibly think that? Of, you know, and she was mortified and, and she was simply trying to be supportive, mm -hmm. but had no idea what it meant mm -hmm. um, and hadn't gotten around to asking, so what does this mean to you? Mm -hmm. right. um, but she was trying to be supportive. Yeah. Uh, so it, it can't fault their intentions, but it, and in retrospect, I hope they're both laughing about it. Right, I hope so too. <laughs> um, but. Um, but that was not at all his definition of, of what it meant to be gay. Mm -hmm. Which I suppose is where, to me, when people try to decide, I'm not gay because, or I'm not lesbian because, mm -hmm. I said, there are as many ways to be gay or lesbian as there are people. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, what, what answers the question is what you find in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, how you reckon that? What convinced you? Um, well, what convinced me was when I couldn't uh, do the exception any longer. I was in my first relationship with a woman when I was 19. Okay. And we were on and off for about four years um, because there was no support uh, where we lived. We lived in a city back in the Midwest. This is uh, in the early 70s. And no support. Anything around gay and lesbian was negative and mostly mm. wasn't even mentioned at all. And uh, so we did this kind of on and off thing for a few years. Um, but yet she was the person, the only person I'd really had a long-term relationship with in terms of I dated men a few times each. For her, we were together two years and then off for a few months, then together another year, then off a little bit, then together another year. But there must have been some sort of depth or something there that kept yeah, pulling you back. Yeah, I was uh, definitely drawn back, but because it was so difficult, and when I told someone else about it, because we were having difficulty, I got a really negative reaction. Mm -hmm. Shortly, about a year after we had broken up, I moved to Denver. And I remember thinking, oh, phew, I'm glad that phase of my life is over. Phase. I was here the first week. Uh -huh. I, I met a woman uh, who I was, was in a school program that I was in. And as we were getting to know each other in the first week, she said to me, she goes, there's something I want you to know. I want you to know I'm gay. And what came out of my mouth for the first time was, so am I. And that was, Before you even realized what I you were saying. I didn't even realize it. And, and I had, you know, just compartmentalized it myself. I suppose it's that moment when somebody you meet gives you the blessing of being free to be whoever and whatever mm -hmm. you find yourself to be. Mm -hmm. You know, without any expectations, without any obligations, uh, you know, without any assumptions about, oh, well, that means you're into motorcycles and leather or what mm -hmm. have you. Um, I, uh, joking with, uh, or, or talking with a a woman I knew a number of years ago who 
uh, no offense intended, uh, said she had a lesbian friend. She was not lesbian, but she was very dykish in her appearance mm -hmm. because she'd been very outdoorsy. Mm -hmm. But she was not a lesbian. And she called up her lesbian friend and said, well, I got my flannel shirt. And uh, her, her friend shook her head and said, no, 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 it takes more than that. <laughs> but it's, it's the goofiness of how we define our stereotypes. Mm -hmm. um, though uh, I suppose on that note, it, it's important to notice that stereotypes happen because there was a grain of truth to them at one point. There seems to be some something somewhere yeah. that that I mean, gets gay made. men, uh, hairdressers and such, mm -hmm. it's because those were the first ones who were wow. relatively safe coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but there's certainly not the limits of it anymore. Not even close.